everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, Toolkit RC sent me three products a way back in, what, December or January, and I'm finally getting around to review them. These are for the RC hobby, so we are gonna start off with the M9. Let me open it and show you what's inside. Here we go, open it up for the first time, you will see it as I see it. Now, if you're in the RC hobby, everything I'm about to tell you will make perfect sense. If you're not in the RC hobby, well, then everything I'm about to tell you might be kind of confusing. The reason the M9 exists on the market is because it has voice, it talks to you. So if you're blind like me, this is an awesome product. The other thing I want to show you is Toolkit RC sent me this. These are the specs for it so that I don't have to sit here and bore you for hours talking about the specifications. Just stop your video and look at this. Let's get into the product. So not many chargers have voice. This one does. It has a 2.4 inch IPS display. You can have different languages for the voice. All right, let's open this up and show you what's inside. First things first, we have our M9 right here. Nice shiny new. And now I'll do the typical thing that all reviewers do. Let me give you a tour. So you have a fan here because it does get hot. It is a charging device and discharging device. You have your screen, which is an IPS display and it shows that it's movable. So let me see, can I pull it up? Oh, I'm pulling the wrong thing. Pull it up right here. There you go. So you can sit it up so it faces you nice. You don't have to stand over top of it, which is a nice touch. Over here, you have your scroll wheel. So you will scroll to select different items. And then when you find something you'd like, you push it down. And then over here, that's usually your back button. Go back, go back. Going to the side, this is where the air gets sucked in to come out this side to cool the unit. On the rear, we have an XT60. So you supply the power in to charge whatever you plug into the front. We'll see that in this demo. Next, you have a micro SD card that contains all the voices and graphics. Yes, you can put a graphic on here and I'm told they put my Captain Drone logo on here. So I'm looking forward to see that. It's just a BMP file. Of course, this would be your speaker for the sound. And moving over to the forward section over here, this is where you'll plug the batteries in that you want to charge. And according to what it says here, it will take an 8S battery. I don't have any 8S batteries. The highest I have is a 6S, so I could charge up to a 6S. But if I had an 8S, I could put an 8S in there. Then over here you have your Type-C connector and your Type-A USB connectors and that's for charging up items you might have around the house that are Type-C and Type-A. And on the bottom you have four little sticky pads so it doesn't slide around your desk when you're using this. Now what else is in the box? A screen protector just so you don't scratch up your screen. You get the quick start instruction manual with nice little graphics pointing out what everything is. And down in here you will get your USB-C cable right there. Is it USB-C? No that looks like that's it. No it's a USB-A to USB-A cable. All right, so let's power this unit on for the very first time. I'm gonna use a six cell 1800 milliamp hour battery to supply power to this unit. It's as simple as connecting the XT60 to the rear of the unit and it should power on. There we go, let's see what it says. Welcome to Ooh, Captain Drone. <laughs> All right, so let me hold the battery and the charger in one hand and explain what you're seeing on the screen. Let me get my pointer out here. So up here, that's the power coming in. That's how many watt, nothing's being used, so it's at zero. And that is the temperature of the uh, little microchip in here. It's not hot right now, so the fan has not come on. But if I plug something up here, it's gonna send power out and the fan will come on because it's gonna get hot. So let's do that now. Let's see if I could do this. I'm holding this in one hand, this another. Okay, this is, here we go, guys. I'm gonna plug this in. There we go. And now we're gonna see the voltage start to pop up. Thank you, it talks to you and it changes blue right here. And then my little cable, this is your balance plug. It can take an eight cell, but this is a six cell. I'm just gonna plug it in here. And now we'll see everything on the screen. How is that? All right, I'll bring this close. There's no fan on or anything because it's not doing anything. So right here it's saying that's the voltage of the battery plugged in. And these are all six of the cells and you can see they're all pretty close together. All right, so let's charge our battery. It's pretty simple. You just press this thing in, this little scroll wheel and you select what you want to do. It's going to talk to you the whole time. I'm going to let it talk because if you're like me with bad eyesight, it's pretty decent then. So I want to charge a LiPo battery. If I wanted to charge a different type, you see all the batteries are here. There's quite a few you could charge. So I'm going to leave it on LiPo because that's what I charge. And how did you say LiPo? Let's see what how it says that again. Let's go LiPo. 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 So I'm going to charge a LiPo battery. It's actually LiPo, but anyways. And then the cells, it is a wow. six. Yeah, thank you. It's a six cell battery and it's on auto, but say you say it couldn't tell. It's always going to tell. You would put it on six. But anyways, I'm going to leave it on auto because they know. I've plugged in... I've plugged in the balance cable down here, so it's always going to know the number of cells. And here's your mode. So you have charge, discharge, and storage. So this is a very short video, so I'm not going to show you them all. So charge is when you want to charge up the battery because you're going to go use it. Discharging a battery is when there's something wrong with the battery and you want to discharge it to really, really low voltage. And storage is what you do when you're not going to use your batteries for a long time. So we're going to charge. Charge. And it says, what's the end voltage? End voltage. 
It's at 4.2 because that is what all LiPo batteries are, unless they're high voltage. So just leave it at 4.2. But the cool thing is, is if you just want to confirm that you have it at 4.20, because maybe you're blind, you just select it. 4.2. So so it, so it actually says it, which is good. Yes, stop talking. And then the most important one when you're charging batteries is charge current, charge current because you have to get it right or else you're going to set your house on fire. So over here on any battery that is made, see mine says 1300. So it means you just put a decimal right after the one, 1 1.3. That's what you want to charge it at. As I said, for most people, if you're in the RC hobby, that makes sense. If you're new to this, then go watch my videos on charging batteries. So let's go put it at 1.3. There we go, 1.3 amps. 0.3 ampere. And then hit start. Charge to 25.20 volts. There we go, and then you hit OK. Charging starts. There you go. So now let me get my pointer and show you what you see on the screen. Let me just try to get this in so you can see it really quick. This line here, when it gets over there, your charge is complete. So here's the voltage of my battery now. It's going to be charging up. There's the amps being sent to my battery. I put it at 1.3, so they'll go up to 1.3, and they will get less as this line gets closer to the end. It tells you here the status, we are charging. We're going up to 4.2 at 1.3 amps, and that's how many watts are being used. And you can see down here that you can move through a menu just by using this scroll wheel. There you go, so there's all the cells. And over here is all the ohms. So obviously this charger is just like every other good quality charger on the market, but the selling feature is the voice. And you can put graphic in if you want. All right, I've zoomed out and I'm just gonna show you the USB ports in the front. So I'm gonna use my Radio Master Zorro, which is something I take to the field with me. It has batteries in it, but a lot of times when I fly a lot, the batteries get low. So say I wanted to charge up the batteries in here using a battery that I use in my FPV drones, like right here. So I run it through this into this. So I'll just plug a USB type A cable in the front or I could put a USB C, it doesn't matter. The power is gonna run through. And, and in my Zorro, I'll bring it nice and close. You can see when I plug this in, take a look at the power button, that's gonna turn red because it's low on power and it needs power. So we should see it turn red, there we go. So now it's charging up from this device down here. So as you can see, it's quite small and it fits in the palm of my hand. If you wanna get into the settings to configure it for your own liking, you press this here, scroll wheel, hold it down, and now you're in the settings menu. Settings. So you can change all sorts of stuff and it will talk to you as it goes through. And you can obviously ID. you can obviously turn off the voice or turn the voice down in these settings. Let me go back. Personalization. Now, since this is just a quick overview review, I've shown you the basic functions. There's one last function here. You just pull this piece of plastic out. Most people won't use this unless you're in the RC hobby. Let me just get that out of my fingers. And what it is, it's a port to test your servos and anything for resistance that's used in the hobby, like receivers or whatnot. So let me just show you that really quick. All right, let's try this. Holding this in my hand is probably not gonna work well. So you can plug anything in the front. You can see on the front, it says, put your minus on this side, your positive on that side. So plug anything you want in there uh, that you wish to test. And let me just show you what you can test on it. So to get to the test menu, you hold this button down and there we go. Measure resistance. So you can measure the resistance, signal output. Signal ESC test, power. So there's power. a lot you can do with this little device here. If you're in the RC hobby, you'll probably use it for your servos for airplanes. That's the thing most people do. I have one here. I could check it out if I wish, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. So that was a really quick overview of the M9. The only reason this charger exists, it's a really good charger. It's just as good as all the other toolkit RC chargers on the market. The only thing this one has different is the fact that it has voice and a flip up screen. So if you have poor eyesight like me, then the voice is pretty handy, especially if you're in a dimly lit room or you're always bending over the item. So you need to flip up screen to see what you're doing and I can't even reach it. There we go. So it's really decent for that. So with all that said, I'm gonna put links below to this product. You could check it out. They'll be right below this video, but we're gonna move on now to this little cool product called the M4 Pocket. So the M4 Pocket is rather small compared to the M9. Does it do the same thing? Not really. The M9 can charge up an eight cell battery. This one maxes out at a four cell battery. The M9 can shoot out a lot of, a lot of voltage into the battery, a lot of watts, a lot of amps. This is much less, of course, because it's very portable, but it's got a neat little trick up its sleeve, which we're gonna see in this video. Looking at the side of the box, you can see that the key features would be that it's an 80 watt unit with a 1.54 color display. 
And just like the M9, Toolkit RC sent me this piece of paper that tells you all the specifications. So just stop your video if you want to learn all about it, because I am definitely not going to tell you everything you can read on this screen. All right, let's open this up for the very first time. Inside the box, you get the quick start manual. And we should have our M4 here, which is upside down. And there it is. Just like I did for the M9, I'm going to go over the features really quick. So our display, then you have a button here that goes to voltage and current. You'll see that when I play with this thing. At the very top, you have your input power and you have a USB-C see as well as a little slidey thing here an xt60 and if we go to the bottom really quick check that out on the bottom you have an xt60 but you also have an xt30 which is very popular in the rc hobby for small drones on the side you have your balance port for a 4s battery or less and going on the bottom you can see it has to cool itself so that's basically all cooling that's it now to power this little unit, most people are probably just going to do like I did with the last unit and plug in a battery. So I have a four cell battery here that I'm going to use to power this, but you don't need to use a four cell battery and I'll show you that in a second. So first let's just power it, plug you in. There's our screen. Looking at our screen up here is all you need to see. So there's the voltage of the battery I just plugged in and 25 degrees Celsius is the temperature of this unit. Everything from the 4.20 all the way down to the 0.02 volts and all this stuff is all for when you're charging something. So now we want to charge up a battery. I have a four cell battery here. It's a 650 and I made sure it has an XT30 connector because a lot of battery chargers all have XT60 connectors. Well, this one does as well. So you have XT30 and then you have XT60, but we're going to use the XT30 connector so just plug this in there we go push that in and then take your balance cable and plug it in the side and we're all set so check out our display now so on our display the 14.7 volts is this here battery and these are all the cells of the battery now up here you have 4.2 4.35 3.8 and 3.6 this means you want to charge it to 4.2 volts per cell or if you have a high voltage battery, you would select 4.35. These two are for uh, storing the battery. So 3.8 and 3.6. And now to select the number of amps you want to send into the battery, you have four options here. So remember our button down here, voltage and current. That's what we're going to press to select these options. So if I hold the button down, I can go between the voltage settings. You see? So I'm going to go to 4.2. Let's go to 4.2. There we go. And then the next option is your amps. This is only a 650 battery. So we want like one amp for something like that. So you see right now it's probably gonna set the battery on fire cause we're shooting out at, what is that for amps? That's pretty high anyways. I can't really see it. Oh, there it is over there, three amps. So let's just touch it once and touch it once again. And now we're at one amp and there we go. And we're all set. So you can see what's happening down here. It's sending out one amp. That's the voltage of the battery. And these are the four cells. They will start increasing all the way up to 4.2 because that's what we selected. The next item to show you really quick is the SC100 that works really well with the M4. So let's check that out. Now, the whole reason this here SC100 exists is just to have a cable that's USB-C to XT60. So if you want to use it with this device, you can use it with many devices because many devices require XT60 power in. So it's just a converter. So watch this, you just plug it in here, plug it in the rear, and and then here, this end, you would plug into something like a wall wart or whatever you have, and then you get power. So if you plug this in here, plug this in the wall, then you can power this up and you can charge batteries using power from the wall because everything is like a five amps that comes out, you know, low voltage. It works perfectly fine. So I'll put a link below to the SC100. You don't really need it for this unless you're traveling and you don't want to power this unit with other types of batteries. Let me get that out of there. So that's all it is. It's just, uh, like I said, XT60 to USB-C. Now, if you don't have any sort of battery to charge this unit, you can use a power supply like this. So I'll just take a type A cable, plug it in here. And then the other end, where is the other end right here? It's a USB-C. Look at the top of our device, flick this down, get down there you, and plug your USB-C in here and watch what happens. We are gonna send power to this device. Now we can use this power bank to use this device to charge up batteries. So I can plug this battery in here and charge it up using this power bank. And the last thing to show you on here, which is really confusing unless you read the manual, is that normally, as you've seen in this review and the review of the M9, you put the power in this way and it comes out this way to charge stuff. You can actually do it in reverse with this unit to charge up USB-C or USB type A devices because if you send the power in this way and then up here you have, there we go, 
USB type C and you can charge stuff. So let me show you that really quick. So for the fun of it, I'll take our tiny little 650 4S battery with an XT30 connector and I'll plug it in here. You can plug in anything that fits and look at that, it powers on. Even though we plugged the power in the wrong way, it powers on. As you can see, I didn't even plug in the balance cable because I just want voltage. I'm not too worried about the battery. So I will plug this in here and the red light on here should come on that it is charging up. So there we go, see the red light? So this is charging. Now I'm sure somebody's going to ask this question. Hey, if I put a battery here and I'm charging up this unit, will it turn off before it drains this battery? The answer is, I don't know. I didn't find it in the instructions anywhere, so I'm not really sure. I think you'd probably have to plug in the balance cable so you can monitor it to make sure they don't go too low in voltage per cell. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this review of these two products, the M4 and the M9. Links will be below. Go check it out if you're in the RC hobby. I'm sure you'll want one of these or both of these. They're really cool. All right. All right guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and we'll catch you in another video with many more cool products to review.